Hi guys, today we're going to have a quick look at where to get help if you're having problems with INAV. This will range from problems because you don't know how to do something through to there's actually a problem that needs to be resolved with the firmware itself. So let's get started. Okay, so the good news is most of these solutions are based on the internet, so they're quick and easy to look up. So the first place that I'm actually going to recommend is a Facebook group called the INAV Fixwing Group. This is a group of, what, over four and a half thousand members now, and there's a lot of problem solving, sharing, as well as just general, you know, good chats and that sort of stuff. But what you need to do is if you have a problem, obviously sign up sign up to the group if you're not a member already but the most important thing is the search so for example if you're having a problem with your gps have a quick search and you'll come up with other people with similar issues that have probably got solutions already so have a look through that first and if you can't find your solution then obviously ask the question but the problem is you do get a lot of repeated questions and a lot of them are simple. So have a look in the search first um, and see what comes up. So another useful resource is obviously YouTube. Um, you, you, you're watching this video, so you guess you know about my channel. So I'm trying to do um, help videos on stuff like INAV and OpenTX, um, all that sort of good stuff. So, you know, you can search my channel if you have a problem or just do general search in YouTube and see what comes up with the solution. Of course, if there are any issues, I'm an active member on the INAF Fixwing group. So if, if I see a repeated problem, I'll try and create a video on it. So hopefully if you have one of those issues, it will pop up. But there are plenty of great channels out there and there's people like um, Andrew Newton, Painless360, Bruce over at XJet, Nasty Model Reviews, Keith at Bonafide Pirate, Matt at Rag the Nuts Off. There's, you know, I, I could sit all day and reel off really good YouTube channels. And if you uh, go to my channel's home page, you'll see down the side, I think it's on that side. I've actually got a, a list of a few favorite channels that are really good. Oh, sorry, I should also really mention Mark Hoffman. Uh, his channel is mainly in German. So if you're a German speaker, his channel is ideal for you. So of course, check him out as well. Um, but the, the other place, uh, if you think, if you've tried obviously these places and it's not an issue you think with what you're doing and you think that something should work, the next place to actually check is the INAV GitHub itself. So I'll put a link in the description, but it's GitHub INAV flight INAV. And what you, you'll do is have a look in the issues and basically, if people have a problem with the actual firmware itself, they will raise an issue and eventually it will get closed once once the bug is fixed. So what you could do is get rid of the open. So you're checking whether it's closed or not and then put in what you've got your problem with. So let's have a look at CPA. So just by putting it in that filter, we've now got a list of all the open and closed errors with regards to TPA adjustments. So if they're open, they haven't been fixed yet. There may be a um, development in progress, but they haven't actually been fixed yet. Um, and the other thing is the closed tab. So on closed, it's issues that have been resolved and are either in a release or will be in an upcoming release. So just have a quick look. We've got TPA and breakpoint adjustment. That's actually <laughs> by Mark. And you can see that's been closed. So there, there will be a release for that issue. It's quite a while ago, so it may even be in INAV at the moment. But you can scroll through and it will actually, it should say if it's been merged. Ah, no. So this one is still open, actually, even though the error has been closed. This is the actual pull request here or the issue. And going through here, you can see that it's currently open with a change request. But what we can do, I can show you an example of what a completed one looks like. So the pull requests are when a developer or a contributor has made a change to, to INAV 
and it's waiting to be added. If it's closed, it's going to be in a release. If it's open, it's not yet added. So you can look through this and see stuff that's potentially coming up in the future. So if we have a look at a closed uh, pull request, so this one here is ready to merge. I was just looking for one that's actually been merged. So let's find an older one. So this this one here. So this one here is actually by Pavel Spahowski. Uh, again, I'd recommend his channel. He's great for stuff on iNav. Um, he's one of the, the main developers, so it, it goes goes without saying really. But you can see here it actually has that it was merged into master on the 9th of October. So that's when you know that it's going to be in the release. So sometimes you'll see so added to 2.6 so this has been re merged into a 2.6 master so when 2.6 goes live it will be in that fix so that's where to have a look so these these are issues related to inav itself so again you just go into inav and issues and this is the firmware on the flight controller itself what there also is is inav configurator which is obviously the, the configurator software the uh, what you actually use to change the settings in inav so again we've got open issues here closed issues and again you you just search in the same way so for example uh, if i could spell it should pop up an issue so I've put in copy OSD because I know that the issue existed. Um, so this this guy here wanted a, a feature to actually copy the OSD to another OSD or clone it or move it, which I, I think is a great idea. Um, but yeah, this this is how you you search for your issue. So there's again two closed, two open, and what you can do actually if you're going through the issues. And then what you can do is actually look through these and if you see something you think is a good idea for example that purely what my mouse was under <laughs> but what you can do is if you think something is a good idea just click on the smiley face and give it a thumbs up um i'll get rid of that because i don't like thumbing up my own shit. um but yeah if, if there's something that you'd like to see in inav give it a thumbs up if it's already got a an issue or a pull request or if there's something that you personally haven't found um, on the GitHub, but you'd like to see added a new feature, you can add that. All you do is click on new issue, give it a, a, an appropriate title. So say you wanted to example, add a new default for a model, you know, when you can choose the presets. Um, so say you wanted a new preset for I don't know what models have we got in here Strix Goblin so you'd add that in there and obviously you'd add a description and the presets that you'd want to add in there and then click submit issue it looks slightly different on the main INAV on on the configurator side it will just appear as a, an issue um, unless it's actually labeled by a developer but if you look on the um the actual inav firmware side and we go in issues they all get automatic labels so there's a, a little bot that sits in the background that says this is a feature request this is support this is a bug and it's pretty accurate um for the most part so for example if we click on this one here you can see this label bot has added the feature request and we can see that this is quite clearly a feature request so what you do if you give it a thumbs up it actually helps the bot learn that's basically where you would go to find out what's going wrong and how to get problems resolved as i say it's like if it's a problem because you haven't wired something properly or you're not sure on how the things are set up the best place will be yeah you know, i fix when group on facebook maybe you know if, even just google search you come up with things like rc group forums all these sorts of stuff they'll help and also youtube and if it's an actual bug with inav this is where to add it you, you could say about it in the inav fix win group but 
in all honesty, it probably wouldn't get dealt with. The best bet is to actually add it into the iNav GitHub. So if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And also, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider it. It will help get this video seen by more people and help them fix their problems with iNav. So until the next one, which is coming out on Friday, uh, which if you're a new person to iNav, this is going to be a really good video for you. It's about getting your transmitter, the very basics for your transmitter set up for iNav. Um, so you don't have problems in the mixer or with stabilization later on. So until then, bye bye.